It's another day here at Blue Fly and we are back. The other day we dropped off all the bits and pieces, the Harrop E-Lockers, the brake upgrades, a whole bunch of stuff from Automotive Superstore. The car is about to go up on the hoist. And today's exciting because we're gonna get a behind the scenes look at exactly how we're sort of setting these diffs up to handle the power that we're gonna be putting through them. So, follow me over to the diff corner. We've started stripping down the GU front that we're running. We're gonna be fitting up some Harrop E-Lockers. It's all very exciting. This is the man actually responsible for the front. He's qualified because he's built Cummins dips before. Now, there's a couple of very important details we have to remember when building dips for this car. Obviously, this thing is gonna be seeing eight, nine, a thousand horsepower. We just don't really know yet, but it is gonna be a huge amount of well over a thousand new meters of torque, massive tires, quite a heavy vehicle. So the diffs obviously have to be built to withstand some absolute insane punishment. We're gonna be running the car part-time four-wheel drive, obviously, so it's gonna be running around rear-wheel drive 98% of its life. And we also have to remember that the front is now being converted to GU diff. So what we're looking at here is basically a torn down GU 4.1 high pinion front center. For this build, we're actually doing away with the air lockers and we're giving the Harrop E lockers a go, which I'm really, really excited about. Now, a couple of things that we're gonna be doing with the front um, diff and the rear diff is basically running them quite tightly set up. Um, to give them as much strength as possible. We're actually pulling the gears apart and checking every single tooth for sort of stress cracks, fractures, um, wear and that sort of thing. The diffs and all the components are actually in quite good condition, but that's not gonna stop us from putting brand new um, bearings and all that sort of thing through. GUs obviously have a factory solid um, pinion spacer. The rear, we're gonna be adding one or building the rear diff with a solid pinion spacer to give it that bit of extra strength. And we're gonna be fitting a front and rear Harrop E-Locker. Now. This guy right here is not only a work of art, but is gonna basically mean that we have all the capabilities we're ever gonna need in a four wheel drive. The way an E-locker works is basically, as opposed to an air locker where it relies on a compressor, airline, all the sort of air seals, um, and a set amount of PSI to actually basically trigger the locking mechanism, a Harrop E-locker is gonna be working with an electromagnet, basically gonna flick a switch in their cab, and what that's gonna do is force the ball bearings up the ramp and basically into the locking pins, which is then going to lock into the back of the side gear, therefore locking the diff. You can't really crash lock an e-locker, whereas an air locker, you can get away with it a little bit more, but that is okay. I think most of the time you're going to be thinking about what you're going to be driving before you lock the diffs anyhow. You can still lock these around five to 10 kilometers an hour while you're just putting around and that sort of thing, getting ready to drive something. They're also fully rebuildable and serviceable. So go to a reputable installer or someone that knows what they're doing like we are here at Blue Flame. Will and Dave here are the diff wizards. They've built countless diffs for all sorts of four-wheel drives for me now. So that's why we keep coming back. The other beautiful thing is with these, unlike an air locker, is that there's no annoying seals um, or airlines or anything like that that can let go and leak. Then you end up with basically a compressor cycling all the time. So very easy. All you have to do is run these two wires out of the diff and away you go. The rest is up to the auto electrician. So not a lot's gonna happen with me standing here in the way. We're gonna let Will smash out this GU front. We're gonna call in Dave for the uh, 80 series rear. We're gonna build that one up as well, as strong as we can. And we're gonna bloody hope for the best. And we're gonna get used to coming back here because I still have a feeling that we're gonna be here quite often building new diffs. Now, what we're trying to do here is build a diff that is capable of taking some power. I don't think there's a Toyota diff in this world that's gonna be able to take the power that we're making, but we're sure it's gonna try and make it happen. So, we're here at Blue Flame so that we can basically run you through what we're gonna be trying to do to bulletproof this diff. Obviously, we're running these Harrop E-lockers. These have got the net forge gears, um, so they're super strong, and obviously, we're gonna be able to lock both those wheels in the back for skids, I mean, driving off-road and that sort of thing. So that's gonna be good. That's installed. We've got a genuine 4-1 gear set here, which is in really good condition. I think that's very important as well. Over here, we have another part of the bulletproofing puzzle. This guy right here is a solid pinion spacer. This is the factory sort of crushed style pinion spacer. Now, 
What these are important to note is that basically this is going to be able to withstand a whole lot more abuse than what this is going to be. These are basically a crush type um, spacer for setting the preload on the bearings, but these can fail in extreme cases, especially for example, big tires, heaps of power and abuse. So um, if that fails, it's going to lead to excessive pinion wear or pinion play, I should say, and then that can basically just chew out your diff really quickly and be absolutely disastrous. So what we're going to be doing is basically running a solid pinion spacer, which is a little bit like that. And now the preload is basically set up with shims instead of being that crush type um, of the factory ones. Basically what I'm trying to say is, if you don't build your rear diff with a solid pinion spacer, you're a bit of a pussy. <sighs> Other than that, we're hoping for the best. In the rear, we're also going to be upgrading from the 8mm to the 10mm axle studs for now. Um, and we're leaving the dowels as the 8mm because we're probably going to be running RCVs later on and we just don't know what sort of dowel size they're going to need. So we're just putting factory axles back in it for now and factory CVs in the front. We're upgrading those axle studs. We've got this all happening. We're going to be basically hoping for the best, but I think, I think if we drive knowing that this might be a weak point, I think we're going to get away with it. So fingers crossed. I'm going to get out of the way, let Dave finish up what he's doing here. Not long now. So we've been very lucky enough to be hooked up with a mad brake upgrade from Automotive Superstore. It's a blend of Bendix and DBA. Obviously we've got that Bendix dual diaphragm booster, which is taking care of the brake pedal pressure, um, actually how easy it's gonna to be to apply the brakes and lock them up. Coupling that with DBA. Now I've run DBA on pretty much all my cars and all my four wheel drives previous to this one and have loved them, never had an issue. So that's why we've run with those. Start with rotors, we've got the DBA 4000 series. Now these are a high carbon, heavy duty metal rotor. It's one step down from the top of the line, which is a, um, a two piece rotor, but we went that intentionally. We wanted one piece because obviously you have two piece, the hat and the um, actual disc separate. They could come loose off road, which we're not about. So these are super sick, obviously slotted in both directions. There are, can be run left or right. There's no real specifics here. The slots are gonna help get rid of brake gases, brake heat, brake dust and all that sort of thing. Um, the other cool thing about DBA rotors is that you can see these different colored paint markings on the side here. They're actually going to turn, <laughs> holy, they're actually going to turn white when they reach a certain temperature. So you can actually keep track of whether you've cooked your brakes, if they've gotten too hot and that kind of thing. And DBA also have their patented kangaroo paw vents on the inside, again, helping to disperse as much brake gases and brake heat as possible generated, which in a heavy four wheel drive with massive wheels and tires, that's a very important feature. We've also gone with the DBA XP pads. XP stands for extreme performance. Now these guys, front and rears, I have loved for a long time. I've used them in the Naughty 40 and had really good results with them. They are a low metal, high carbon fiber sort of compound. They are a little bit dusty, but they work really well, especially on a fully loaded car. So we went with a set of those as well. And then last but not least, DBA have actually brought out their Street Series calipers, which are an OEM replacement. They're basically ready to go, ready to fit into the car. They've got all new seals, all new pistons. It's a brand new unit. It's an OEM replacement. It's making life super easy for the DIYs. I don't want to mess around trying to rebuild calipers. It's a very cost-effective way of doing a brake upgrade and that kind of thing. We're going to couple all of this with all the nice stuff that's in the car, plus that dual diaphragm booster. I think this car is going to stop on an absolute dime. Partnering this sort of gear with something like braided lines and brand new hard lines throughout the car is going to mean we're going to have elite stopping power. The engineer is going to be happy. It's going to be really safe to drive. Plus, being a heavy car, big tires and heaps of power, you want to really pay attention to the braking system of your vehicle. So massive shout out to Automotive Superstore that have sent us all this gear. We're going to get this fitted up while we're here at Blue Flame. They are the experts. They're going to make sure it's all fitted correctly because let's be honest, I've got no idea what the hell's going on. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. Let's get it over to the boys and get this front end together. Motherfucker, I've been modified, 45, feeling like a motor car. I ain't regular, feel like Jordan wearing 45. Traumatized, victimized, seen some of my n***a die. Knock you off a base with a bat when them n***a slide. Homicide, genocide, televised, emphasized. Perpetuating war, tell that n***a he gon' pick a side. Hood ties from hood lines, my n***a doing dope lines. I run into the cops, that's a big exercise. Uh, don't run into the cops, that's the motto. I don't see it coming to an end like Legato. Get chipped like Sakato, send a wave through the hood, now it's sounding like Verado. Why you eat bread with avocado? We be trying to die shells before I land in our tomato. Singing all my sorrows on Apollo, I've been trying to pave the way, but they didn't tell me it was Pato's. Mm. America ain't dreaming if it's coming when the- Kyle has been busy at work, he's been killing the front end, and it is basically together. We, uh, well, I say we, I underestimated how much stuff I was missing from this when I brought it in here. So it's been a bit of a day of picking and 
stealing bits and pieces from the diff graveyard upstairs to try and make a complete diff. But we got there in the end. The brakes are on, which is exciting. Automotive Supersaw sent us out all this stuff. We are just waiting for the correct brake pads because this guy got GU rear pads, which isn't very helpful to anyone. And I think all in all, this is gonna come together really nicely. We've just got to finish off some stuff at the front before we mount these up. Kyle's in the back working on the rear diff, which is now finished. Um, Dave built that. We're gonna give the rear the same treatment, new brakes, new bearings, new calipers, new pads, all that good stuff. We've got 4,000 series rotors for the rear as well. Then I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be a matter of getting it down, chucking that new booster and master in, and then we'll be on our way to Brisbane in no time. So, very keen. Shining like a real anthem. Charlie Summer wanting that she think I think I answer. Whoa, telling me she wanted me to hammer. Trying to get saved, baby, I am not the answer. No, I can never trick, trick, trick. Let's the bitch is my bitch with a kiss on my lips. Like, oh, I am not a pimp with a limp. I'm a man with a gift and I'm doing my shit like that. Oh. Smooth. Now, a lot of you young players out there seem to neglect this part of a four-wheel drive build, the braking system. Now, let me run you through what we're doing to this car. We've added bigger wheels and tires, we've added a shitload of weight, and we've given it a thousand horsepower. So you bet your ass we need to upgrade the brakes to make this thing actually stop and uh, perform. And obviously, at this channel, we're all about engineering and legalities and that sort of thing. So we obviously had to address the braking system on this car urgently. Uh, and that's what we're gonna be doing here with the help of Automotive Superstore. They've sent us a stack of brake parts, including this Bendix dual diaphragm booster. Now, if you wanna know exactly what these things do, my good friend Will over here actually just suggested a great experiment. Try and use your brake pedal with your car off and then turn your car on and then try to use your brake pedal. That is what a booster does. It basically boosts your braking performance with a series of diaphragms. This guy, dual diaphragm. So you can probably guess the science that's going on in here. There's two of them, which means basically twice the, I guess, braking pressure that's gonna be able to be applied through the pedal given the same, I guess, exertion of effort. So you're basically just gonna have a massive increased improvement in braking performance um, and the braking pressure from installing this. It's not even that much bigger. It's about 10 to 15 mil deeper than the factory unit, which is important for us because someone put a coil over tower right in the way and that's kind of annoying. Um, and something else to note is that despite me having owned 180 series and all of them having a four bolt master, Bendix only do a two bolt master. So you will also need to acquire yourself a two bolt master to go with your upgraded booster. Other than that, this is gonna help complete the braking package. We've got some brand new calipers from DBA. We've got some spicy new rotors. We've got some spicy new pads as well. Everything combined should help this thing stop on a dime, which is important for the engineering side of things, which we'll definitely be doing. Um, so yeah, I reckon we bloody will hook into this soon and install it and see if it fits with the coilover tower. So some of the other things that we're here at Blue Flame doing is basically assembling the diffs, the swivel hubs, the wheel bearings and all that sort of stuff. At the moment, it's basically just slapped together loosely to move it around. Obviously, we don't want to take it up to Brisbane, get the engine in, go to dyno it and then realise, oh, okay, we've actually got to do the swivel hubs, we've got to build the diffs, we've got to get axles and all that sort of stuff. So. What we're gonna do is pull all this off. We've got all new brakes from DBA. We've got the Bendix dual diaphragm booster that Automotive Supersaw sent us, which is really nice. We've got brand new DBA Street Series calipers to put in there as well. Um, and the guys here are gonna be putting brand new swivel hub kit and wheel bearing kits in the rear. Will's over in that corner, finishing up the front diff. Um, Dave's gonna gift us some axles and CVs and that kind of thing, as well as some freewheeling hubs. So we're gonna chuck all that together. Hopefully, it all starts to come together real quick. Then after here, the next stop is Brisbane, engine, dyno, fuel system, Haltech, 1,000 horsepower, four-wheel drive, I'm excited. Well, it wouldn't be a trip to Blue Flame without slight disaster. We're just currently trying to fix some trailer brakes, but the good news is, that brings us to the end of another episode here. The boys have killed it. They have done, I don't even, fully rebuilt the rear, buddy. 10 mil axle starts, rebuilt the front, all new brakes from Automotive Superstore, built the diffs. Dave is a wizard at all that sort of stuff. And guess what? Now, the only thing left to do is put a bloody engine in it, a few little sort of finishing touches, and this thing should be driving it on the road. So, fingers crossed the next couple of episodes are gonna be getting that done. If not, well, I probably don't really know as much as I should, but that's okay. We'll see you next time. So it's got to do his hair, you know. Fuck off, sit down.